En la barbería no se llora, or No Crying Allowed in the Barbershop, by artist Pepon Osorio. So our artist was born in Puerto Rico and moved to New York and eventually Philadelphia and for a long time worked in New York uh, as a social worker. And he's in his art pieces because he is from Puerto Rico and an immigrant to New York, he confronts that duality of identity in part of his artwork. Um, and there's a term actually for a Puerto Rican living in New York called a New Yorican. So that's something uh, like a vocab term to know with this piece, where you're identified in a very particular way. You're not completely Puerto Rican, so that becomes possibly an identity issue, and yet you're not completely uh, American, and so that becomes an, perhaps a struggle for the individual. And what kind of compounds that fact is that Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory. If you're from Puerto Rico, you have a U.S. passport, but yet you don't get the same rights of representation in the government. So you can't vote in like a U.S. presidential election or any elections. You don't have political representation in the government. Like no one really represents you in the Senate or the House of Representatives. So it's like, well, what is my identity? You know, who am I really? And so for our artist here, he's definitely uh, expressing the that sense of conflict, or maybe a better word is struggle between those two worlds that exist kind of for the individual. And for him also, he, he experienced this kind of challenge to his identity and that Puerto Rican space in the United States. So one of the hallmarks of his work is that he wants to um, kind of embrace and include community within the art piece. So this piece in particular was in a building in a Puerto Rican community in Hartford, Connecticut. And he included by interviewing, videotaping, and then, um, you know, people helping him to create the art piece and then coming in to see the art piece since it was locally in their community. So it was uh, something that he was very mindful of is to include people to uh, have them think about the issues and maybe feel that sense of community togetherness and that sense of belonging and that you're not alone and these are issues that everyone in this community and immigrants in general uh, perhaps confront. And then also kind of taking a little bit of a detour from the identity of an immigrant, but then also he challenges this notion of masculinity within the Latino culture. So both those items are um, included in the imagery in this art piece. So let's take a look inside. So these images, the top one is of the exterior. The bottom left is one of the barber chairs and I'll show you a close up of that in a minute. And the one on the bottom right, that's the college board image that they would like you to be able to recognize. So let's go over to content now. And this is just a close up of the chair because I thought it'd be kind of nice to see uh, how the different things are represented, kind of all inclusive here in this chair. So first of all, this art piece is a mixed media installation. There's a ton of different objects here. There's sculptural items, there's paintings, there is video uh, going on with sound and without, you know, pictures hanging on the wall. I mean, it, it's got a little bit of everything. And he chose a barbershop as his kind of installation environment because it's a very common place to gather where you have a sense of community and a barbershop in particular, there is that very masculine place of community where you might have more masculine images and where men learn masculine behaviors, you know, these stereotypical mas masculine behaviors. So in the title, you know, no crying allowed in the barbershop, you know, it's, Crying, yeah, it reminds me of the, um, if you've ever seen the movie, um, 
oh gosh, a league of their own where Tom Hanks, you know, there's no crying in baseball. It's the same idea where there's no crying in the barbershop or even more broadly, there's no crying with men because crying was considered and maybe even still is considered broadly a feminine trait. So our artist is pushing back at that and other masculine stereotypes that perhaps are toxic and that limit and restrict and harm men and also women. So that is really a, a big idea. This piece might look, you know, really kind of kitschy and over the top and a little bit kind of overwhelming the fun and bright and bold and you get distracted by all these things. But if you think and look closely, he is really providing a um, place to think about these big issues of identity. Uh, now, his art has sometimes been called as New York and Baroque, and that's not an official style. It's just something very specific to uh, Osorio as an artist. New Orican because he's from New York and Puerto Rico, and Baroque because the drama, the sculptural detail, you know, all the kind of decoration everywhere, this explosion of the visual. And really Baroque art, the, the two places where it was most prominent, you know, you have in Europe and Spain and um, in Mexico, you have some Baroque elements too. So it, it is typically seen kind of in that, um, in those environments. So it would not be unexpected here. And in the room itself, you have just masculine symbols everywhere. You have phallic symbols painted on the wall, sperm painted on the wall, uh, car seats, barber chairs, which are, you know, you're not like a beauty shop, you're in a barber, uh, which is more masculine. You've got action figures around the room, hubcaps, sports items, you know, just everything that's stereotypically masculine you have. And then if you remember when we talked about Jeff Koontz with the um, Pink Panther piece, we uh, went over the term kitsch. And then uh, in here, that, that term kind of applies that you would use the Spanish term, chuchurias. And it's that same idea of kitsch. And by including a lot of objects that might be considered a bit kitschy, you know, mass produced, kind of lower uh, art, uh, appealing to, you know, a lack of taste or you know, appealing to the masses, he is kind of giving a contrast between high art, which is what his piece is, and low art. Social class, where high art for the elite, and then the kitsch or churchurious for the masses and, and lower socioeconomic level. So he is also kind of pushing back at what is fine art. What I find interesting in this piece too, besides all the visuals um, and the sculptural detail are the videos. And you can see in this chair, the TV up at the top. And the TV is showing interviews in some of the TVs. There are like 16 TVs around the room. And then some of them are showing interviews with men on what they define as masculine, what they think their role is as a, a father or a son or you know a brother. And then other videos are just quiet, no, no sound, and it's just you're looking at men crying. And then they show different reactions to men crying. Some are very sympathetic. And then others kind of react and discuss, like, why are you crying? You're a man. Uh, so he, he talks about masculinity, stereotypical masculine roles. And then if you look at closely at the chair here, this barber chair, notice that there's a muscular masculine body you know, imprinted on the chair and then a Puerto Rican flag. So, you know, for, for Osorio, and here you can see a, a bigger kind of selection of images from the interior of the space. For Osorio, he is exploring cultural identity. What does it mean to be American? What does it mean to be Puerto Rican and, and an immigrant to America? And, and really, what does it mean to be an immigrant? How much of your do you succumb to the pressure of being like everybody else and giving up your heritage or do you embrace it? 
And you know, that is a complex expectation and, and, and to always be thinking about how you identify yourself. Uh, and he has a lot of interviews where he talks about that, where it's just nice to go some places where he doesn't feel like he has to identify who he is. He can just be. And then again, Osorio is definitely taking on the idea uh, in the Latino culture of machismo, being manly. What is manly? You know, is it having tattoos? So you can see some of the paintings, kind of like tattoo imagery. Um, right next to bullets, which are a phallic symbol. You know, what really is being manly? Do we always have to have one identification of masculine behavior? You know, strong and providing for your family and tattoos and cars and action and war and violence and sports. Is that really the only way you can be a man? No, you know, that's what he is presenting here. And he, he also addresses with some of the imagery, like, the toxic definition of masculinity and how that leads to perhaps homophobia, violence, infidelity within relationships. Um, and then how we get taught those messages and identities through politics, religion, um, you know, the mass media, and community places like this. So I think his, his art piece is really interesting and his art is important as uh, you know, a message to um, really confront people's expectations of both gender and just identity in general. So how about we do for um, function and formal quality? Function is definitely social commentary. Again, the, the concept of identity and how we define ourselves and what influences our definition of ourselves and our in gender. And then for formal quality, you could do emphasis with the emphasis on all these stereotypical gender roles and you know the images and paintings and sculptures and things that are here uh, within the space. So again, that is our artist Pepon Osorio from the Global Contemporary Era.